Well, hey there, and hello, and welcome back to the fireplace of the dollhouse for another reading from A Grimm's Complete of Fairy Tales. That's right. Hey, and if you've been here before, well, you know what we like to do now. We like to set the mood straight. We get them lights out. We get that fire crackling and been going, and we play us a little cross hop. Tonight we have us a John Stenay hop. That's right. But without the T's, it was just a John's. But I like to say Johnston, a little bit more southern that way. All right, let's dive in, shall we? Add a little tacit in there, I think is what it's called. <laughs> All right. So what are we reading tonight here? Well, we got us a couple of shorties, so I won't take up a much of your time there. But uh, what are we going to be reading first? Well, well, the ear of corn. That's right. The ear of corn. <laughs> okay. In a former times, when God himself still walked the earth, well, the fruitfulness of the soil was much greater than it is now. And then the ears of corn did not bear fifty or sixty, but four or five hundred fold. The corn grew from the bottom to the very top of the star. And according to the length of the stalk was the length of the ear. Men, however, are so made that when they are too well off, they no longer value the blessings which come from God, but grow indifferent and careless. One day a woman was passing by a cornfield when her little child, who was running beside her, fell into a puddle and dirted her frock. On this the mother tore up a handful of a beautiful ears of corn and cleaned the frock with them. And when the Lord, who just then came by, saw that, well, he was angry, and he said, Henceforth shall the stalks of corn bear no more ears. Men are no longer worthy of such heavenly gifts. The bystanders who heard this were terrified and fell on their knees and prayed that he would still leave something on the stalks, even if the people were undeserving of it, for the sake of the innocent birds which would otherwise have to starve. The Lord, who foresaw their suffering, had pity on them, and granted the request. So the ears were left as they now grow. Oh, that was the ear of corn. Quick, fast, down and dirty. All right, and now let's read us another one. The Aged a mother. That's right. In a large town, there was an old woman who sat in the evening alone in her room thinking how she had lost her first husband. Then both her children, then one by one all her relations, and at length, that very day, her last friend. And now she was quite alone and desolate. She was very sad at heart, and heaviest of all her losses to her was that of her sons, and in her pain she blamed God for it. She was still sitting lost in thought, and all at once she heard the bells ringing for early prayer. She was surprised that she had thus in her sorrow watched through the whole night, and lighted her lantern and went to church. It was already lighted up when she arrived, but not as it usually was with wax candles, but with the dim light. It was also crowded already with people, 
and all the seats were filled, and when an old woman got to her usual place, it also was not empty, but the whole bench was entirely full. And when she looked at the people, there were none other than her dead relations who were sitting there in their old-fashioned garments, but with pale faces. They neither spoke nor sang, but a soft humming and whispering was heard all over the church. And then her aunt of hers, well, then an aunt of hers, rather, stood up stepped forward and said to the poor old woman, Look there beside the altar, and you will see your sons. The old woman looked there and saw her two sons, one hanging on the gallows and the other bound to the wheel. Then the then said the aunt, Behold, so would it have been with them if they had lived. And if the good God had not taken him them taken them rather to himself when they were innocent children, the old woman went trembling home, and on her knees thanked God for having dealt with her more kindly than she had been able to understand. And on the third day she lay down and died. Ooh sorrowful tale, I say. Well, let's read us one more and let you get on with your morning or your night. The Hazel Branch. All right. One afternoon, the Christ child had laid himself in his cradle bed and had fallen asleep. Then his mother came in, looked at him full of gladness and said, Hast thou laid thyself down asleep, my child? Sleep sweetly, and in the meantime I will go into the wood and fetch thee a handful of strawberries, for I know that thou wilt be pleased with them when thou awakest. In the wood outside she found a spot with the most beautiful strawberries, but as she stood was a stooping down to gather one, an alder sprang up out of the grass. She was alarmed, left the strawberries where they were, and hastened away. The alder darted after her, but our lady, as you can readily understand, knew what it was best to do. She hid herself behind a hazel bush and stood there until the adder had crept away. And then she gathered the strawberries, and as she set out on her way home, she said, as the hazel bush has been my protection this time, it shall in future protect others also. Therefore, from the most remote times, a green hazel branch has been the safest protection against adders, snakes, and everything else which creeps on the earth. And this has been the hazel branch, the aged mother, and the ear of corn. From Grimm's Complete of Fairy Tales. That's right. Hey, did you like them fairy tales? Real quick, fast, down and dirty. One a little sad, one of a little bit of a older time, and one of the mother and son of God. Oh, okay. Hey. I thought they were pretty good. They were nice, quick, fast, down and dirty, but... Highly original as far as that's concerned. There was no princesses and kings and all that other happiness stuff. A little quest for somebody to go on and uh, very redundant a lot of times. The cliche, though they like to mix it up a scope, you know what I'm saying? Any event, I liked it. Hope you did too. So any event, let me take us out a little bit more Johnston A harp there, but without the T as you know. <laughs> All right, hey, hope you enjoyed yourself and you have yourself a good day and an evening. So, kiss to you, missus, and a tip of my hat to your old cat. You come on back now again, you hear? You don't stand? You better. Hope you do. All right, take care of yourselves.